Hello, and welcome to episode 6, where we'll be covering how to use the mixer and uh, enable, pl uh, enable plugins to to your uh, your patterns, individual patterns or the song as a whole. So, um, first thing is we can go ahead and, oh, first thing I should mention here, if you don't have the master edition or you're using the demo, I'm not sure the mixer will work on the demo version. But if you like to still watch the video and, and see what you can do with it, feel free to. So you can see too, if you'd really like to fully get the benefit of everything. And let me tell you right now that plugins are amazing if you know how to use them correctly. So the first thing we're probably gonna do here is get rid of our sounds here because we don't need them anymore. We're actually gonna edit what we have. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that by pressing a little X and uh, move that out of the way. Let's actually move the playlist and uh, keep this here. So we're going to go ahead and enable our string here. And uh, what we want to do, and enable the piano roll and open it up. So what we want to do, make sure it's supposed to pattern. What we want to do is make this sound a little more realistic. So right now, it just sounds like it's recorded directly into a microphone in a very bad way. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm pretty sure you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to add some depth and some sound as if it was recorded in a big room. You can hear it like reverb. Basically bouncing off walls, you can hear that. Not like echo, but you know what I mean. So we're going to go ahead and use a plugin. And how we're going to do that is we need to enable the mixer and get familiar with how the mixer works in order to uh, enable that. So we're going to open up the step sequencer, make sure this is enabled. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and open the mixer, which is on here. The shortcut is F9. It's right next to the uh, browser, music browser. So open that, and it'll bring up this. And right away, you're going to say, this looks like something out of a studio. It does. It really does. But we're going we're gonna to use it and benefit. I'm going to show you some very basic features of how you can uh, go ahead and um, get, everything, get everything working here. So first thing we need to get familiar with is what, what the heck we're even looking at. Well, what we're looking at is individual sections that are tied to channels that we can link in order to make certain effects appear on certain channels or the song as a whole. As you can see here, Master is enabled and Edison is right here. And as Edison's right here, you will notice that uh, it's, it's enabled there because it's enabled for the entire song. Certain instruments here that we've enabled with Edison have been edited, so it's going to be in the Master section. And right here is the plugin section. And if you select this, you can go ahead and hit that and hit pre, uh, not preset, select, and it'll select any plugin you have. If you have none, you probably have the demo version. Or if you do, I'm being very surprised because I don't remember the, the demo. But then again, I, I got the demo a long time ago. They might have changed it. But regardless, that's how you would enable a plugin. But what we need to do is actually not have it on master. Right now it's on master. We're going to go ahead and it's insert one, and you'll see that the Edison disappears giving us the opportunity to go ahead and select our uh, our plugin. So what you want to do is hit this. If you have this, I don't know if it comes with it. I bought everything all together, so I don't know which comes with what. I'm very sorry for that. But if you go ahead and hit Fruity Reverb 2, that's what we want to have. So if we hit that, select it, it's going to open up this window, which is another editor um, edition. So in this, we have Fruity, Fruity Reverb 2, which basically makes it sound like it's in a room rather than in your face. So Here's a great opportunity to test this out as well. Type in keyboard to piano, so that means every key will make a, a note. And uh, what we need to do, now that we actually have the plugin, you'll notice it sounds the same. We need to actually link it to the channel itself. Because if we had it on master, everything in the entire thing would automatically have it. But we don't want that. We want it on the strings only. So what we're going to do is open the properties, and right here you see a thing that says FX, and it says target mixer track. That's exactly what we want. So, uh, Apparently, if you double click, it'll open up the mixer automatically, which is nice to know. Now, we want to make sure it's on one, so that way it's enabled the one and it has the fruity reverb, if you can understand how that works. Up in here, you, you enable the, the channel, open up the channel options that we want for whatever we want, put the FX to one. That means that means on one, it is anything, any plugins that are on one is going to be enabled for that channel. That's what that means. So now that we have one enabled, we're going to have the fruity reverb. You can also rename these as well, middle click to name it if you want a certain instrument to know what you're actually looking at. So like if you have a bunch of these enabled and you don't have uh, you don't you don't have them labeled, you're, you can also rename these as well. You don't know what you're dealing with. So uh, and as you can see these green buttons will also disable the plugin as well. I think you can 
Yeah, you can also solo it, so you can do all that good stuff as well. All this stuff down here we'll get to in just a bit. Maybe. I don't know if I'll explain that quite yet because it's a bit complicated. Anyway, we got that enabled. Now Now that it's tied to it, you can see that it's an FX1. We got it enabled to Fruity Reverb. We're going to close that, and we're going to keep this out. Now, if I press one of my keys with the typing keyboard, you'll hear a big difference. You hear that? It sounds like it's in a room. It actually sounds like it's... You can hear that little echo in the background. And we want to change that a little bit to make it a little more in-depth. So if you click this little drop-down arrow and hit Presets, it has some for you, so you don't have to worry about configuring all these little settings. And the venue is a pretty good one. It makes this shape. It makes that shape, so if we go ahead and hit it... You see that? It has a lot more depth. If you want a lot, a lot of freaking depth, then cathedral or large hall would be your would be your want. I mean, not cathedral, but uh, I guarantee you that large hall is a pretty. If you want a lot of air in the background, but we don't want that. We're gonna go ahead and stick with. Uh, we're gonna actually stick with default. That's what it was originally at. And uh, you can play with these settings all you want, test out different stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and stay with the uh, the default settings. I'm gonna close that, and now string actually has it enabled. So if I hit this. Actually sounds a little more natural because of that reason. So you know what? We're actually gonna change that. We're gonna change this to uh we're gonna change this to the venue instead. Because it'll make a much uh, bigger impact on our song. So now if we go in here, you should be able to hear it actually the reverb. Oh you hear that? Something went wrong. The kick is actually enabled to FX1 and I didn't realize it. That's how you can tell. You can hear the echo and the kick. We're going to disable that. Check if all of our, any of our other ones accidentally got changed. Strings okay. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, well it's all fixed now. Okay. Oh, you hear that? That, that little epic, slowly the string tunes out instead of just flatting straight cut off. That's really good. That's what we want. So we can also enable this to um, wave files and uh, audio clips. So if we hit this, hit one, it'll also have it on the crash. It won't have it on the reverse crash because it's not a, it's, it's a clone. It's not the same thing. But we can enable it on it. So let's go ahead and hear what that would sound like if we uh, let's extend one of these, which I forgot to mention in the last video. You can stretch these, but if there's no other notes, there's no point. But I'll show you how that can benefit you. Actually, it could benefit you just like this. If you if you don't have any other clip and everything's perfect, you can just stretch one that doesn't have anything else, and the song will continue to play. Hear the reverb? Hear that? But I don't think that's what we want to crash because we want it to stop and then crash. So that's perfect. Let's go ahead and put this back. So now that we have this figured out a little bit, and we got a little bit more reverb and stuff on there, let's add another effect to this. Get insert one. What other, what other effects can we find here? I don't know if you have all these, but I'm going to give you some examples of what we can do. I'm not going to enable anything else except for the reverb, because I don't. And this should work just fine without the reverb, because it sounded pretty good before. So if mine sounds better, it's just because of the reverb. That's all. And if you really want it to sound that way, you can go ahead and buy the program, because uh, it's definitely worth it. If you're definitely into sound uh, music making or just sound effects, definitely the program for you, because this has everything you can need. A little bit more, too. Never used LSD. Um, honestly, the only other one I want to do here is hardcore, but uh, that one I'll explain to you later because you can make custom electric guitars with that and some really cool stuff. I think we're good for that, though. I don't see anything else we could use. Well, wait, no. We might can use balance. Balance is pretty cool. So what this does, let's go ahead and enable the uh, string in the piano roll and bring back balance. I know I'm going pretty fast here, but... Uh, You'll get, the faster I go, the more you have to look back in the video and uh, have to actually check how to do this and get it in your brain, how to quickly get to everywhere you need to go. Watch the video a few times, you'll probably get used to it, trust me. It's not that hard to figure out. If it is, I apologize, but it you'll get used to it very fast. So, uh, what, what this does is it balances the volume without you changing the channel and making it louder than it can get and balancing it from left to right in the pan. It's a separate way that you can make it a little more interesting. So let's go ahead and select pattern. Try this out. So 
See that? Reset that. Make it louder. So uh, that's a quick tip on how to do external pan and volume change and still be able to edit the actual ones instead in here. I'm sorry, there's a reason this is like this. And this is probably confusing to saying why can't we just do it from here? Because in a later tutorial I will teach how to do piano roll, pan, and volume editing, and you and if you have it like that, you can't exactly change the volume of how it is if you have it set to a certain volume within the piano roll. So this is a way how you change the volume instead. I'll, I'll explain this more in depth later, I'm sorry. And if you want to disable any plugins in here, instead of just hitting this and having a cluster of them, you can uh, go ahead and, and hit the little arrow, hit replace, and then hit none. It'll delete it. That's how you get rid of a plugin. So now that we've gotten all this figured out, what we're going to do, now that we've gotten some cool uh, plugin enabled for the string, we're going to actually make a song out of this. So I'm going to delete everything here, and now that I've got everything labeled, it's going to be a lot easier to place where I want everything. So let's go ahead and start to make a song here. Also, I forgot to uh, mention that the audio clips won't save how you edit them as in stretching unless you have one out and you click it to copy it because you can have different ones. If they were all the same, then that would be pretty lousy if you have certain parts that need to be uh, unique. So, word of advice, if you, if you have one just how you want it, keep it out there and move it when you actually need it instead of deleting it. So, now we got this. Let's go ahead and make it a little interesting. Put some, some crashes. Gotta move these again. Make it all pretty. I know I'm not explaining it and going fast and everything like that, but uh, you can either you can follow along exactly how I'm doing it and really try, but uh, I'm just doing this really I'm just winging it right now because I'm trying to What would that sound like? Perfect opportunity to edit the kick. Right there. Just one extra one extra one right next to the middle. Let's try that. Right, there we go, look at that. It's about the same as the other side, but it's still pretty cool. Okay, now that we got that. Keep that there and uh, put the snare down because that's where song's going to actually begin right here. Because you can see it's a. Uh... Just keep the rim in. I know. Wait. Let's keep this here actually. Let's have the rim going throughout. We're going to make a very short song here. I know I'm going pretty fast. I'm very sorry for that, but. Uh... You can. I'll let you follow along. I'll, I'll actually explain how I did it when I'm done here because I'll go a lot faster if I just get it done right now. Shake. Where could the shake go? Shake can go right here. We're actually going to go ahead and have this continue into a new... Okay. So let's go ahead and put the last element here, the hat seal. The rim's going to be going up throughout, apparently. Have them all going at once. I still got to add the. Let's see, this can stay here. These going into each. Just copy this one more time. Put it right there. Okay, now if you want to copy this down, it should be pretty cool. Wait, that. Oh, wait, nope, that one's there. I didn't mean to put that there. Did I do that right? I think so. Move it all one over. I think it... No. Oh. No. Uh -oh. Fuck. I'm... I don't know. I'm a little confused right now, but whatever. If you want to copy this down, go ahead. The kick starts at 3 and then continues and pastes all the way to uh, 17. It ends at 17, sorry, it's not placed again. And uh, you can you can probably see it and just copy it down. It's not too hard. 
So go ahead and stay here for a couple seconds and just slowly drag along and let you copy it. it you see the pattern eventually and how it works. You can always pause the video and check it out too. Okay, now that we've done this, let's go ahead and try it and see what it sounds like. And now, that sounds pretty awesome as a mini song. We can always copy and paste and just continue on, of course, if you want to make it a constant loop. But um, one thing that we've noted is that when it got to this point right here, when it got to, sorry, when it got to right there, around right here, you heard that it sounded like it was going to continue, but then it just cut off. So what we're going to do is actually use that dragging capability like this and drag out the kick at that end of the point. It won't play it now. And, uh... Do we want the snare gone too? Let's let's see. We want all that. Let's try that now. Let's go ahead and try it. No, we want these gone. These one definitely be gone. And this one as well. Let's try it now. Maybe we do want the snare. See, it's all trial and error with this, and it's definitely worth it when you get it done. Let's, let's try to put the kick here and drag it so there's only one kick. Let's try this. It's actually pretty cool. Let's try this. Maybe we do want it all. Let's see, it's all trial and error. We'll get it done. Dragging everything, put it right back how it was. Hmm. I think that's pretty cool. It adds just that extra kick we needed at the end. So we have a little edit now. Let's go ahead and save. I think it's pretty good. So as you can see, there are multiple things you can do here with the uh, with the plugins and also with the. Uh, I'm sorry. What was I gonna say? The plugins and the. Uh, playlist and the playlist. Editing the playlist to uh, sound a little better. You can see we did some edit here with the uh, kick and did some uh, actual song creation. Didn't do much on the plugins, but um, one more thing I, sh I should probably include in this video is the use of fading in and out. Something we all would love to do in, in, in there so we don't have to use an external program. I'm going to show you how to do it in an external program in a, in a tips and tricks video. Not in this one. This is all tutorials on how to use the actual program itself. But um what we're going to do, how you do that, is we can do it for master volume or an individual uh, channel or individual pattern. What we're going to do it for is master volume, though, because it's, it's the most simple to do, and I will cover how to do the other ones in the next video. So what you do is you find, here's master pitch and here's master volume. If you right-click on that and hit create automation clip, that's going to create an automation clip for the entire song in the playlist that we can use to edit the actual main volume of the entire song, which is what we want. We want to fade in and fade out. Maybe not fade out, but we want to fade in. Let's just go ahead and create automation clip, and you can see this big red thing appear down here. Now, whatever the main volume's at, that's what this, this, that's what this, uh, what's it called? That's where the, uh, this white bar is. Not the red bar, not the bar underneath, but that really skinny bar, that's our volume level. If we want to, let's say we want to increase, no, we want to fade in. So what you do is right click right where you want it to get to full volume capacity. So let's say right in the middle where the string is. If you're going to right click there, it's going to make a dot. And I just dragged it up a little bit, so you want to be careful with that, make sure it's at 75. What you want to do is now at the dot at the beginning, drag it completely down. Now it's going to fade in. If you want it to have a curve more than rather a line, there's a middle thing here, and it's it's a tension line. Basically, to release tension, you drag down and make it kind of like a, a ramp. 
drag up if you want it to go up volume right away. It's hard to explain, but you can pretty much see how it's going to work. And let's go ahead and drag down a little bit and have it fade in. Let's go ahead and try it. Hear that? We have a fade in now, but it's not quite exactly equal. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have a little more tension to that, a little, a little more. Let's go ahead and try that. That's better. That's better. It's pretty good. Now, if we did want to fade out, also I should mention the uh, automation clip will extend to how big the song is. If you add more to it, I'm not really going to keep that. You'd have to actually extend it. And then you'd have to uh, carry this line and actually drag it. We want to be careful and look at the bottom right and make sure it's at 75 or else it'll mess up. Let's go ahead and keep that back at that. Delete that. Let's say we want to fade out. Let's go ahead and uh, right click there and make sure it's at 75 and hit the other one. And uh, apparently it didn't work correctly because I dragged it out here. How would you delete this? You just hit delete. Okay, there we go. It, it took out the extra. So we do this. It's at the end of the clip. Let's go ahead and drag it to the end of the clip. Right click where we want it to start to fade out. Make sure it's 75 where the main volume is at. If your main volume is anything but 75, it will uh, automatically adjust itself and make sure you adjust it. Now it's 75 as default. 75 is where the main volume is. You'll see now that it's actually down all the way. That's because we stopped the clip as soon as it was at the beginning of the clip, which means nothing can be heard right now. If we go in here, and this confuses a lot of people and gets them very angry because they can't hear their stuff. Listen, can't hear anything. Because you stopped the clip when the volume was down. You have to, you have to continue it, and you can see the volume shot back up right up here. If you go down here, it's gone. And you see the volume right here. Watch this. It'll raise up as we go. Make sure it's at maximum capacity before you start testing stuff, or else you get confused and think everything's deleted. It's not. It's a quick uh, word of advice. Let's go ahead and drag this down. Make it a little curved, maybe. Let's see what that sounds like. That's good. That's very good, actually. So now we've uh, learned automation clips. We've learned a little bit of how to use plugins and a little bit about the mixer. And we've done a little bit better song editing. And uh, we've, uh, you know done a pretty good job actually so far learned a lot we've used a lot of the features and uh, in the next video I'm not sure what we're gonna do yet but I'll uh, pretty much get something going here because there's a lot to cover but just so much I don't know what to do first and if it's gonna overlap but I uh, will figure that out later right now we've gotten everything we need to know as of now of some good ideas of some good basic tools to be able to create our own songs and even some cool effects by using plugins and one other extra thing, these send columns are not the same as the inserts. The inserts are the plugins, the sends are something different. The master will cover the entire song, so be careful when you're doing that. So until next time.